Ready? Dave, we want to thank you for coming. Uh, we're going to interview you here and talk about your military and that sort of thing. So let's just start off. Give me your, your name, your whole name. Dave Wayne Gilly. And Gilly, G-I-L-L-E-Y? Yes. What's your date of birth? 04-28-62. And where do you live now? What's your address? I live at uh, 27th and Chestnut Street. In Portsmouth, Ohio? Mm -hmm. Okay. And... Um, where, where, where did you live before? How long have you been there on, on Chestnut Street? 21 years next month. Okay. Where were you before then? Germany. In Germany? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, where did you go to school? Uh, Clay High School. Did you graduate mm -hmm. from Clay High School then? 1981. And then what, what did you do after you graduated? Two weeks later, I was in basic training. Fort Knox? Fort Benning, Georgia. Fort Benning. Infantry. Okay. Um, let me ask you this now. What were your parents' names? Uh, my father's name was um, Bill Stevens, and my mother's name was Joni Carver. Joni Carver. Carver. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, did you know your grandparents' mm -hmm. names? Mm -hmm. What were their names? Uh, Clarence and Carrie Compton. Compton. Clarence and Carrie. Now, mm -hmm. was, were they on your father's side or your mother's side? Uh, father's side. Okay. Uh, w did your father have a different last name that I hear you say? Stevens. Stevens? Mm hmm Okay. And um, then on your mother's side, do you remember your grandmother, grandparents' names? Busby. Busby. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you ever meet them? Did you ever yeah, see when them? When I was a small child, but then, you know, they, they passed away. Okay. All right. And um, you were born in Portsmouth? Where I, were you? I was born in Seattle, Washington. Okay. How long did you live in Seattle? Mm, probably about three years. Then we came back here. What was uh, the reason for coming here? We did uh, we Mom and Dad divorced, and Dad was from here, uh -huh. so we came back with Dad. Okay. Now, did you have any brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. uh, I have three sisters, Jackie and Jan, and Rhonda, uh -huh. and two brothers, Jamie and Bill. Were any of them ever in the military? Yes, my brother. He did uh, 27 years, uh, Shannon. Uh-huh. And, and what was he in? The Army. Army? Okay. He was an Iraq veteran. Okay. Is he still living? Yes, and uh, he was also in a Desert Storm. Is he local? Uh, he lives in uh, Illinois, Quincy, Illinois. Quincy, Illinois. Okay. Now, are any of your siblings local still here? Uh, I have a brother that lives here in Portsmouth. What's his name? Jamie. Okay. And a sister, uh, Rhonda, she lives in Texas. Okay. And two other sisters, they live in uh, uh, Washington State. Okay. Um, do you go back to Washington State much? Do you? I, I left there in 85, for the Army. Okay. Went back to Germany. That's the last time I've been there. So now you, are you... Um, are you married, single, divorced, widowed, separated, all of the above, or what? Single. <laughs> single man? I mean... I, divorced? Divorced. Divorced, okay. Uh, divorced and not remarried. Right. Okay. Now, do you have any kids? No, I do not. Now, um, what's your occupation presently? What do you do? Well, I, uh, I worked at OSCO for a few years, and then I broke this ankle in oh. the Army, and I broke it again at OSCO, and I got disability retirement. Okay, from that broken ankle then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and you worked at OSCO. Um, what, did you do anything before, any occupation before that? Um, I worked at a Kmart for a year, Shawnee State University security guard for a year, mm -hmm. M&J Welding a couple years, um, KSA Railroad Ties, and then went to OSCO. All mm -hmm. of these are local, aren't they, in right. Portsmouth area, mm -hmm. aren't they? Mm -hmm. Now, did, did, were you drafted? Did you volunteer? I volunteered. Okay. And I believe I heard you say now, two weeks after graduation, you graduate from Clay, mm -hmm. um, you were in basic training. I was on the delayed entry program for a year prior to going in service. So that means that you can finish your high school, and is that what that means, you, delayed entry, or what was the deal Yeah, there? you finished, they let me finish high school, of course, and then I went straight into the Army. Okay. Well, uh, here we are again. Um, you graduated from high school when? 1981. 81. And then I believe you told me earlier that uh, about a 
couple weeks or four days or was it four weeks or something? You, you went weeks. right into the Army. Right. Two weeks you mm -hmm. went in the Army. And what made you decide to go into the Army? Uh, watching the Vietnam War on TV. On back TV when you were a kid? I thought, well, I want to do that. Yeah. I want to be a soldier. Okay. Yeah. And, and um, you mentioned being on the delayed, what's the delayed program? Delayed entry program, that's like a, a year out before you go in, you can sign up for the military. Mm -hmm. And providing you finished high school and graduated, boom, you're right in there. Okay, mm -hmm. so so that uh, it lets you graduate from high school mm -hmm. and you can go right in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so were your folks okay with you going into the yeah, service sure. and everything like oh, that? Yeah. Okay, was your dad ever in the military? Mm -hmm. He he uh, was in the navy. For, was he for three years? Okay, uh, in the navy and uh, about when was he in? Would you say? Mm. Uh, was that Vietnam maybe or before then? I'm thinking fifties or the sixties. Okay, All right. yeah, I think it was around sixty. Uh, Somewhere around 60, 61, 62. Okay, all right. So now, um, where did you do your boot camp? Uh, Fort Benning. Fort Benning. How long were you down there? Three months. And uh, that must have been uh, boot camp and AIT right. too. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was your MOS? 11 Bravo. What is that? Infantry. Okay. Ground pounder? Ground pounder. <laughs> okay. So you're there for three months, and eventually you're you're going to get. Uh, did you ever did you, did you ever go airborne, or did you ever want to do that, or anything like that? Um, I wanted to, but then it was too late. Okay. Why you mean too late? Well, I mean uh, I lost interest. Okay. But when I was graduating basic, the drill sergeant come around, said he had eight airborne slots open at Fort Benning, but I wanted to come back home. Oh. And you know. Okay. Cause I, so I came back home for 13 days and then flew out to Germany. When you flew to Germany, did you fly into, where did you fly into? Frankfurt. Frankfurt, Rhine, Germany. Maine. Okay. Is that a straight through or did you stop over? No, that's a straight eight hour flight. Okay. From? Uh, New from, York. From New York. LaGuardia. Okay. JFK. So you, you go straight to Germany and, and then what happens? Where, do you, where are you assigned? Well, first they put you in the 21st replacement battalion. That's just like a little holding facility. Mm -hmm. and then they assign you a unit. Then they ship you out to that unit. Mm -hmm. And I got shipped out to the Holland border, German Holland border, uh, a little town called Xanten. Mm -hmm. What did you do there? Uh, it was a missile site guard. A missile site? Uh, that was a nuclear weapon missile site. You guarded the nuclear weapon We would rotate missiles. the shifts. <laughs> We'd go down there and pull security around that. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, what was that like? Was it boring? Mm, sometimes it was kind of uh, exciting because uh, there was a lot of radicals. I mean, well, the Germans didn't want the nuclear weapons there, and they'd come down and protest, and then the German police would come down and run them off, and mm -hmm. then sometimes they'd come back. And mm -hmm. Did you ever get into any um, difficulty with them yourself or anything? Um, one morning we was going to work, we left our base, and we was going to the missile site. And when we got down there, we was all on this big bus because we had to relieve the other guards. And there was something like 200 Germans blocking the gate so we couldn't get into the missile site. And the German cops was dragging them away, and finally they got the gates open. It was a joint security with the Belgians. The Belgians pulled security along with the Americans. Mm -hmm. The Belgians pull, did it on the perimeter of the outside in between the fences, and the us Americans is on the inside, right there with the weapons. Did the, any of those protesters ever throw rocks at you or stuff like that? Or? You know, I, I, I can't remember, John. I, yeah. I, I don't remember. Well, how, how long were you there at that post? Uh, I was there at Zanton for probably eight months, and then they shipped me to another uh, missile site south of Dusseldorf, a little small town called Gravenbroich mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Capellan. Okay. And how long were you there? You're, you're guarding missiles, still guarding missiles. Yeah, then. probably another uh, two years. Mm -hmm. Then I had to rotate, come back to the States, Fort Lewis for a year, re-enlisted, back to Germany. How long were you at Fort Lewis? 11 months. 11 months. Um, was that a requirement before you could Go back to Germany, you had to spend some time in the States, or mm -hmm. what was the deal there? Was that it? 
Right, okay. So while you're there at Fort Lewis. Blackhawk, Blackhawks, Blackhawks. What do you mean? Uh, we're a straight leg infantry unit. If we yeah. didn't walk it, yeah. we'd air mobile on Blackhawks. Oh, okay. And I really miss that. Do you? Oh, yeah. Helicopter fanatic. Right, okay. Um, so that, but that's where you re enlisted, didn't mm -hmm. you? Fort Lewis in 1985 for another four years back to Germany. Mm hmm. The uh, 4-8th Infantry Division of Mannheim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did my four years there, ETS, went back to Germany, lived for another year and a half. Now, when you are um, at, uh, when you go back to Germany the second time, where do you end up then? You said uh, the 4th four, the of the 8th. Mannheim, and Mannheim. Uh, Coleman Barracks, 4-8 Infantry, Delta okay. Company. Okay. What do you do? What are you, what's your job? Uh, uh, I was just in a regular... Uh, line squad and uh, then uh, the first sergeant asked me if I'd take over the arms room, unit armor. Armor? Mm -hmm. So I did that up until I got out. What does an armorer do? You maintain accountability of the weapons. You're there when they have alerts. You go in and issue the weapons out and uh, you make sure uh, everything's accountable mm -hmm. and uh, inventoried on a daily basis. You'd what have happened? an officer, he would come in, he wants to see your paperwork. Okay. And you had to make sure everything, every weapon, every bayonet, every piece of equipment in that arms room, serial numbers recorded. Did it ever come up missing? No. no. Not, not on my watch. Not on your watch, I was going to say. <laughs> no, 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 well, no. did it ever come up missing then? Maybe sometimes. Mm, there, there was a, a couple of occasions soldiers would misplace their weapon, lose it. Oh. But uh, they would lock the, no one would leave, be able to leave until that weapon turned up. And it would turn up. Would it? Oh, yeah. That would be a pretty careless soldier. I imagine what would happen. Article 15. 15. Take, take some stripes, which meant money. <laughs> so how, how long are you there? On the, uh, you're on the border, aren't you? No, uh, from, from the 4-8 Infantry Division, we'd get assigned to pull border duty. Okay. And there were several other units that rotate pulling that duty, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, that would go guard the border for four or five weeks. So you'd be down on the border four or five mm -hmm. weeks, mm -hmm. and what would that mean, guarding the border? You just, it was an observation post. Uh -huh. you just constantly maintain, you know, just watch what goes along the border and report it back. You're looking at them and they're looking at you. Right, just like on the photographs. When, when we say them, are, who are we talking about? Russians and East, East German, German soldiers? East German guards, okay. soldiers. Okay. Um, now, one, when you're there on the border, um, uh, what kind of thing goes on back and forth <clears throat> across the border? Anything? Uh, just basically, you know, they're, they're doing their guard rotations. Uh -huh. and you can watch them shift the guards. A truck would drive to one tower. They'd get a few guards out, go to another tower get a few more guards out and just up and down the border mm -hmm. all day, all night long. They're staring at us, we're staring at them. They'd fly helicopters by, we'd fly helicopters by. Did anybody try to defect? Yeah, an East German defected, but there was a ravine like. Mm -hmm. And we were up here so we couldn't see. They shot him in the back and they sent a truck down with hundreds of soldiers going down that hill. So we sent a helicopter up the Army did, and the pilot radioed to us on the ground. He could see him retrieving the body, mm -hmm. loading onto the back of the truck. Mm -hmm. And that went on all the time. I mean, since the wall went up back in the 50s or whatever, hundreds of people's died trying to escape. Trying to escape that, yep. uh, right. Hot air balloons, ultralights. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, did you, when you're pulling guard duty like that, is it, is it tense? I mean, at night it's, it seems to me it might be kind of spooky or something. Um, yeah, sometimes you just have to have your wits about it. I'm, you'd have this in the back of your mind. Are they trying to sneak up here at nighttime under the cover of darkness? Or are they Did gonna they try ever? To, Did they ever do that? Well, you could hear movement down there, mm -hmm. but uh, we knew they was down there, but uh, yeah, or threw rocks down there. No, <laughs> no you get court-martialed for that. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, did you have night vision mm -hmm. material? We had AMP VS-5, night vision goggles. Mm -hmm. so. uh, but we never saw anything, but we could always hear things moving. Mm -hmm. But 
It could have been a wild boar hog. There's wild boars all over Germany. Did you ever go hunting over there for them? Yeah, never interested me. Yeah. Uh, so then, then um, you're on the border there, and uh, about what year is that? 87? 87, 87 or 88. 88. 30, 31 years ago. We're getting pretty close here to the fall of the Soviet Union, the fall of the wall. 1989, yeah. November. You were over there when the wall came down? Yep. Sure Tell was. me about that. What happened? I was sitting in the living room, and my ex-wife, she was German, and she come running in the living room. She's kind of like crying with joy. Mm -hmm. They opened the wall, they opened the wall, because she had family in East Germany that she'd never seen. Oh, okay. Um, did you enter, what, what happened then? Did East Germans come over the border? Flooded, flooded West Germany, like thousands upon thousands of them. Yeah, yeah. Did you interact with them? Did you talk to any of them? Did, uh, mm -hmm. Your wife's German, did she? Yes, she did, but not, I didn't so much. I mean, where, where did her parents live? Um, actually, her mother was from the Canary Islands, oh. from uh, Tenerife, uh -huh. and her father was from Germany. Okay, okay. What did they think about the fall of the wall? There? Were they, did they live in the east or the west? Well, actually, her mother lived in West Germany, and her father, they were divorced, and he lived in Spain. He lived in Spain. She's from Spain. He lived in Spain. She's from Germany. He's from Germany. He lives in Spain. She's from Spain. She lives in Germany. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> and then, okay, did, did you ever get a piece of the wall? I did, but several happened? pieces. I came back here in 1990 and gave them away. You t yeah, you told me that before we started, right? Yeah. I wish you still had those. I do, too. <laughs> I've got some Russian hat emblems Do you? that I brought back that the Russians wore. It's the sickle uh -huh. and the hammer. Hammer and sickle there? Yep. Okay. I've got two of those, a large one and a smaller one. Uh, did you bring back any other souvenirs from over there? A uh, little miniature Eiffel Tower. Okay. <laughs> so when you're over there, you'd get leave. Mm -hmm. And where would you go? All over Europe. Right. Italy, Turkey, Greece, Spain. We went took a boat from southern Spain to Africa. Really? Mm-hmm. Ceuta, Tangier. Sounds exciting. Did you did you and the other soldiers go together? You'd always have Did no. you go by yourself? No, I went with my Oh parents. your wife. Your wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ten dollars, get on a hop, take leave, put in for leave. Uh huh. Anywhere the US was flying, you go there. Space space available. Mm-hmm. SA. Did you like Germany? Loved it, beautiful. Very, very clean. Um, I, we were talking earlier, and I told you that uh, my daughter lives in, in uh, Munich. Munich, Munich yeah. 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 And we went to the lake of Konigsberg. Konigs it's, uh, What's the name of that lake? Lake uh, Konigsee. And that's where Berchtesgaden is, yep, where sure Hitler's. Is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you went up there? Did you? Yeah, I went there? to Hitler's tea house, or okay. the Eagle's Nest. Yeah. So they called it. So you stood where Hitler mm -hmm. stood. Same spot. Same spot. Did they yeah. get a picture of you? Uh, no, they had a picture there of Hitler standing in that spot. Uh -huh. There was several of us standing in that same spot. So they they had a picture displayed. Yeah, outside there, like an um, aluminum frame uh -huh. of Hitler standing in that same spot. Yeah. That was in probably 80, 82. Hmm. Okay. Well, now, now you're over in, in Europe and uh, that sort of thing. When did you come back? Then? 1990. 90. What happened then? Is that when you, ET, you got out? No, I lived in Germany as a civilian for a year and a half. And uh, I came back here to go to the police academy. All right. Um, where did you ETS? Fort, Fort Dix? Dix. Okay. And then you went back to Germany? Mm hmm Okay. I um, had a civilian job. Doing what? Uh, we'd take a, it was with the Army, but it was a civilian job. Mm -hmm. Transfer uh, computer components all over Germany. Sometimes I'd be gone two or three nights, mm -hmm. but only had to do that once a month. And once a month, you'd have to be on standby. You had to take this pager home with you. If a special package came in that needed to be in Berlin, 
you'd have to drive that, regardless what hour it was, to Frankfurt train station, Hauptbahnhof. You had to stay there until the train departed and the MPs, military police, would sign for that. Mm -hmm. You could not leave until the train departed. And that was computer parts that you were dealing with? And whatever. Whatever was in the package. Whatever was in the package. Okay. <laughs> but mostly it was computer parts, as, and uh, we'd drive to different bases throughout Germany mm -hmm. and drop those off or pick them up. Um, what, what was your rank when you got out? Sergeant. E5. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did, did you like the Army? Loved it. You didn't re-up, though. What was the reason about that? I was going through a divorce. Okay. Wanted to be a civilian. Okay. Um, then, then what was the worst thing that ever happened to you there? Uh, a black uh, lieutenant and his wife and their baby, they got killed on that Lockerbie flight. They was from our unit. They were from your unit. 4-8 infantry. Okay. So he, his wife, his child were on that Lockerbie mm -hmm. aircraft that blew up I don't up recall his air. name. He was a new lieutenant. He was coming home for three days before Christmas oh, okay. when that bombing happened. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And that's pretty uh, dramatic, you know, for the entire post. Yeah. You know, they couldn't get everybody in the chapel. Right. For the memorial service. Right. And then uh, a lieutenant went home one morning after PT on his motorcycle and uh, had a wreck and got decapitated. Oh, man. Okay. Well, let's talk about the best thing that ever happened to you in the Army. Uh, traveling. Traveling around. Yep. Drive you saw the world. Yep, and driving for a full bird colonel. Really? Like that. Okay. SD special duty. <laughs> you, do you get a bonus for doing that, or nah, no, just nah, special nah. duty? No brownie points, nothing yeah. like that. It was just a good job. Excellent. Back then, this colonel I drove for, he had a telephone in the jeep I drove him in, and it's a here, call somebody. He would go to, a, I'd take him to a guest house for a meeting, and he said, Sergeant Gilly, you can have two beers, no more. Two what? Two, two beers. Two beers and that's it. <laughs> but uh, did you sometimes have three? Four or five. <laughs> that German beer is good. That's good stuff. Yes, it is. Um, have you kept in contact with any of, any of your friends, any of those no. guys over there? Okay. You need to probably get on the Internet or something, try and look some of them up. Yeah, that, maybe I'll get a response if anybody sees that. Maybe. Um, what kind of uh, ribbons do you, do you get for your service there? I got two good conduct medals. You get one every three years. You have to have good conduct. Mm -hmm. I got the NCO Professional Development Ribbon. I got uh, two Overseas Service Ribbons. Uh, something else with Oak Leaf Clus Third Award. Um, you still have your uniform? I gave it away. Why? I, I don't know. I gave the uniform away because uh, now I wish I would have kept it. But uh, I, I gave a lot of military clothing away when I came back from Germany. Did you give your ribbons away? Every, the whole, my entire whole dress uniform, sergeant stripe, everything on there, blue ribbon cords. Who'd you give them to? My cousin. Oh. And uh, I'm sure he doesn't have them. Did he go in the service? No. No, he did. Huh? Well, is is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Um, any? You, you said uh, now some other members of your family were in the military, weren't they? My your, father, your Navy, father, three years, and the brother. We mm -hmm. were talking about seven years. Okay, yeah. Uh, Shane in the army, Gilly. was he in the army? Twenty-seven years. Okay. Uh, he was with the National Guard, and then he went Desert Storm, and then he was in Iraq. Mm hmm. I think you said he lives in Quincy, in, Illinois. Il Illinois. Mm -hmm. Well, if he ever comes back here, get him down here. We'll I, talk sure will. To him. <laughs> I sure will. I sure will. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Anything? I got to see Bob Hope in '87. Oh yeah. In Cardiff, Spain. Uh -huh. I thought that was pretty cool. That was man. I watched him all my life as a child. And on here TV, he is. and there he is for real. And now I'm out of the United States. I'm on vacation in Spain, and there he is. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty neat. Yeah. 
So uh, of your, you've traveled all over Europe, haven't mm -hmm. you? What was your favorite country? Germany and Switzerland. Germany and Switzerland. Why is that? Clean. Oh, is this clean there? No garbage. Yeah. Different here. There's garbage all over them. The ditches and everything, aren't they? Terrible. And the roads are perfect. Mm -hmm. Germans can build a road. It lasts 50 years. Mm -hmm. I see them build a road here in Portsmouth, New Boston. Two months later, it's got a damn pothole in it. Yeah. German yeah. engineering. Mm -hmm. Okay. Germans make good stuff. Well, it, it, Dave, is there anything else you'd like to talk no, about? No, sir. But nothing I can recall. Well, I really appreciate your coming in. No problem. Thank really you. Good.